Hi, I'm Oz Clark, and I've got Kevin Zerani with me, I've got Matt Kramer with me, and I want to talk about Syrah. Where are the best places to grow the grape? Obviously, we're going to say the, the Rhone Valley in France is really good, but there's not much of it in the north. There's loads of it in the south, where they blend it into things like Chateau Neuf du Pape, and Cote de Rhone village yeah, and all Cote, this kind Cote of stuff. Cote de to me, village, or just even a simple Cote de Rhone, one of the best value wines in the world. I agree. Grenache and probably some Syrah. Go over to Australia. Now, Australia's Shiraz reputation has been spoilt rather, again, just like Chardonnay. In a way, Chardonnay and Shiraz are the two Aussie, Aussie drinks. Right. And the reputation has been spoilt by big brands cheapening the flavor. But those Shiraz wines from Australia, from South Australia, very big. From Victoria, much more perfumed. From Western Australia, peppery and dark. And from the Hunter Valley, very famous, surprisingly gentle and elegant yes, and easy. Yeah. Four different flavors we talked about. In other words, the Shiraz is already expressing place. Going over here to, uh, to California, I'm sure that Syrah expresses place in California, if you let it. Oh, there's no question that it does. I mean, as Kevin, you were saying earlier about how, you know, it, when you first wrote the Windows on the Line, you know, wine course book, you didn't even mention Syrah. In the 1990s, there was a tremendous replantation of the vineyards in, in California, as you know. And there was, that was when, it was in the 90s, when Syrah really got planted. And one of the interesting twists is that most of the plantation occurred in two areas. The big bulk area, which is the Central Valley, and then California's Central Coast, typically along the coastline where it's fairly cool. We haven't talked at all about things like strains or clones of, of grapes, and it's, it's quite shocking how different things can be. But it was particularly important in California with Syrah because at the time these new plantings occurred, in the United States, for the first time, we had the commercial availability of about 20 clones or strains of Syrah that were found and identified and cataloged and segregated in France, which is really the mother house of Syrah in some, in some way, at least over a long span of time. And those clones were ideal for cooler climates. And so Syrah had a 180 degree turn in quality and in variety and style and in expression of place. And so I think that California Syrah today is probably the most exciting transformation of wine that we are seeing in the United States. And I definitely, I definitely agree to that. And but, are people drinking it? Uh, yeah, they are. Uh, obviously they continue to, continue to plant a, a lot more Syrah, but I think what I've heard from just now from both of you, it would be very, very difficult for you to put a definition to a, a Shiraz or to, or to a Syrah, You're, I heard you say more place, it's coming from the place. So I think the consumer listening to this right now should understand that the Rhone Valley has its own style. Uh, Australia, and, and you just mentioned like five different regions yeah, in Australia. Sure. Just uh, to impress you. <laughs> yeah, I'm buying their book. Uh, and also you know, in California where it's fairly new and what's going on, is there any other place in the world where you're gonna see good Syrah or Shiraz? Chile. Chile, okay. Argentina, All right. cheap and good South Africa. I never say cheap. cheap, I always say inexpensive value. Inexpensive and good. <laughs> New Zealand, if, if you want some of the most astonishing cool climate flavors in red wine you've ever had, New Zealand Shiraz or Syrah is absolutely remarkable. Okanagan Valley from British Columbia, when was the last time you had one of them? Uh, actually, I was there in the fall. Yeah. So, Swiss? Have you had any Swiss? I haven't, I missed Syrah. that. No, I missed, I, I, missed really one. I missed that. I think, I think just to wrap it all up, the French styles on the whole are leaner and drier, lots of muscular flavors. Okay. Maybe a bit smoky, maybe a bit more rocky, a bit earthy. Right from down the south, they get a wonderful perfume sometimes in the Languedoc, some of those areas down by the Mediterranean. On the whole in Australia, called Shiraz, you've got richer, jammier, more toffee, more Jammies, chocolatey, word you always hear. pruney, chocolatey, yep. syrupy yep. kind of flavors. Uh, and other areas of the new world, using the word syrup, not Shiraz, you hopefully get that lovely flavor of blackberries, black currant, a little bit of smoke, and I would say a wine which is serious, but wonderfully drinkable and very versatile. I'd add one more thing. In the modern world today, the tannins of Syrah have become quite soft and supple. 
30 years ago, if you said Syrah, you expected the manliest of wines, right. which meant, you know, really tough, hard tannins that took 20 years to get soft in the bottle. Today, you can drink a young Syrah, and although it will be mostly a kind of a fresh, ripe, jammy fruit with not many layers, that takes more time in the bottle, it will go down beautifully. It's a great steak bread. Right? You can also drink it at the bar while you're waiting for your steak to get <laughs> right here. Yes, to that. There you go. Syrah. Garçon, some more wine. <laughs> you and your French. <laughs>